We're going to expand on the consumption example from earlier to do the entire idea of aggregate expenditures. So if you remember from earlier, we had only GDP and consumption, and we saw that the MPC was equal to 0 0.6, because for every 1,000 that real GDP was increasing by, consumption was increasing by 600. So my change in consumption divided by my change in GDP was 600 divided by 1,000, and therefore was 0.6. So that's how we got that number from before. We're also given planned investment, government purchases, and net exports. What do we notice here? We notice that they're always the same. So remember, we denoted these with bars over them to show that they're not changing. We also have the same assumption of before with taxes equaling to zero. And now we can figure a few things out. The first thing is we want to find out that planned aggregate expenditure. We want to find that aggregate expenditure. Remember that aggregate expenditure right, is consumption plus planned investment plus government purchases plus net exports. So I just need to add all of these up. So what do we notice when I add all of these up? Well, when I add up plan investment, government purchases, and net exports, it's 2,400 minus 400. So that's an extra $2,000 we have to add to each one of these consumptions. What does that get us? Well, that'll get us 9,800, 10,400, 11, thousand eleven thousand six hundred twelve thousand two hundred notice each one of these each change of these is going up by six hundred as well the consumption function and the aggregate expenditure function have the same slope they have that same slope now, the last thing we want to figure out is we want to talk about and figure out this unplanned change in inventories. How has inventories changed? And remember that inventories change the following. If GDP is greater than my aggregate expenditures, we're producing more than we're spending, and so this is going to see an unplanned increase. And then remember, if GDP was less than aggregate expenditure, meaning that we're spending a lot, we're taking it out of inventories. So we see an unplanned decrease. So therefore, my unplanned change in inventories is going to be that difference between the two of them. Look here, I have GDP of 9,000 and I have spending of 9800 That means that $9,800 came out and only 900 went in. So that tells me that I had a negative or a decrease of $800. I had a negative $800 unplanned change in inventories. We do that the rest of the way down here. Here is 400 here we actually see they're exactly the same, so there's no unplanned change. Here there was more spending, or sorry, there was more, here there was more production than there was spending, so we added two inventories. Same thing here, $13,000 is produced, $12,200 was spent, so again we added two inventories. Here we can come up with an equation, right? Unplanned changes are just going to be my GDP minus my aggregate expenditure, if you want an equation to help you out there. But make sure you're really understanding why that's the case. Last but not least, if you're given a table like this, you can figure out where the equilibrium level of real GDP is. And that would be 11,000, because 11,000 creates us to have 11,000 in aggregate expenditures, and so when GDP is equal to aggregate expenditure, we know that's the macroeconomic equilibrium and there's no unplanned change.